I have several passions. But one of my passions is to continuously search my family tree. And with the help of the LDS Genealogy Library in Los Angeles, I found my grandfather's family and other Fairchilds. George Fairchild, the founder of IBM, his son Sherman, the inventor of the Fairchild compressor used by the Beatles. There was also John Fairchild of Women's Wear Daily Magazine. And continuing on my trail of expedition, I found David Fairchild. Now, David is my sixth cousin, three times removed. I don't know what that means. But he is the most passionate man of the family. He was passionate about adventure and plants. Thank God, he became a world-renowned botanist. He was born in Lansing, Michigan in 1869. His father was the president of Kansas State College of Agriculture. And his uncle James was the president of Oberlin College. Let's take it back just a, just, a, just a tad here. In 1856, a newspaper columnist by the name of Ben Pearly Poor, he wrote about the food of America's early days. Let me read this. There was porridge for breakfast, bread, cheese, and beer for lunch, a boiled dish or black broth, salt fish, boiled pork, and baked beans for dinner, hasty pudding, and milk for supper. Yum, yum. In 1894, David was offered a job with the Smithsonian. He was to facilitate scientific exchange with colleges in Europe. And one of these positions was in Naples, Italy. So he was off on an adventure to search for new plants and fruits for the United States. Now, bound for Italy, he was on the steamship, the SS Fulda. He met a gentleman by the name of Barber Lathrop. Now, Lathrop was a very wealthy man. He was a son of a governor of Virginia. He became David's mentor and took an interest in and financed David's journeys throughout the world. But well, David discovered over 200 thousand new plants, fruits, and vegetables. They traveled to five continents, 50 countries. Let me read some of the fruits and vegetables that David found in other countries and brought back to the United States. There was kale from Croatia, hops from Bavaria, red seedless grapes from Italy, avocados and watermelon from Chile, Pineapples from Cape Town, South Africa. Wheat from Spain. Citron from Corsica. Pomegranate from Malta. Egyptian cotton from Cairo. Nectarines from Afghanistan. Papaya from Ceylon. And that's the short list. Now, at the end of 1904, Fairchild returned to the United States. He was living in Washington, D.C., was invited to a party and met a woman by the name of Marion Bell. The doctor, excuse me, the daughter of Alexander Graham Bell. Hello. Well, they fell in love. They courted for six months and married on April 25th, 1904, 1905, excuse me, after a couple of years of marriage, they settled down. They bought a farm about 10 miles out of Washington, D.C. That town became Chevy Chase, Maryland. They were continuing their research. They were growing trees. They were growing family. They had three children, Alexander Graham, Barbara, and Nancy Bell, and he called them his fair children. I love that. Now, Eliza Skidmore, she was a DC networker. Sound familiar? She said, David, I saw these trees in Yokohama, Japan. Beautiful cherry blossom trees. Do you think we can bring them over to the United States? David did not hesitate at all. He contacted his connections in Yokohama 
and brought the Japanese cherry blossoms to Washington, D.C. And on March 27th, 1912, they were planted in and around the Tidal Basin in D.C. They eventually retired to the Coconut Grove area of South Florida and soon after started the Fairchild Tropical Botanical Gardens named Campon. It's a Campon is a Malay term for a family compound. It's a spectacular and thriving world, world renowned tropical garden. I'm going to leave you with a thought about the life of David Fairchild. He was dedicated to his passion for plants and adventure. He never retired, but pursued a life filled with always asking. A quote from his granddaughter, Helene Pancoast. She heard him say in this last couple of years, he used to say, never be satisfied with what you know, only with what more you can find out. So the next time you're visiting Miami Beach and you're relaxing back on your massage bed, covered with sheets made of Egyptian cotton, under a palm tree, enjoying your mango margarita or an IPA, with a side of guacamole and chips. Raise a glass to David, David Fairchild, my seventh cousin, three times removed. Here's to David. <laughs>